Hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry at Mowers and Blowers. Uh, as you guys know, I've been pretty busy with my air compressor and my uh, UIT 4000. Continue on New York 25 West for four miles. Uh, GT 6000 Craftsman uh, garden tractor pretty soon. Um, but in the meantime, you know, I've been looking every day for good deals. And uh, last night I saw this uh, Craftsman 524 snowblower. He says the engine's busted. And he's, yet he still wanted a hundred bucks for it, you know? And so uh, I'm like, well, I have a five horsepower to come say snowblower engine just sitting around my, you know, garage. And so uh, he wanted a hundred bucks for it. And I says, uh, look, it's a busted motor, you know? <laughs> I mean, it is in good shape though. There's no rust anywhere. It's one of those green things, you know? And uh, so I said, you know, I'll give you a 40 for it, right? He's like, come up to 50 and, and it's yours. So I said, ah. Uh, Hell, what the hell, right? 50 bucks? You know, it's a snowblower, you know? If I uh, fix it and get it to run right and stuff like that, I can sell that for 350 you know, on a good day. Even though uh, we haven't had much snow this uh, year at all, you know, and it, I don't know whether or not we'll be getting any more, but nevertheless, you got to pounce on deals while you can get them, you know what I mean? So I'm going to get it, fix it. It'll be uh, another, you know, uh, episode or two, you know, for the channel, which I, I, you know, every every YouTuber needs content, right? And uh, eventually I'm going to run out of stuff to fix. Well, not really. When spring rolls around, I have plenty of lawnmowers, you know? Anyway, so I'm on my way to Hempstead to pick it up. Um, we met, we're going to meet at this Verizon store in a parking lot somewhere and give them 50 bucks and I'll uh, score this uh, two-stage Craftsman 5 horsepower to come say Snow King with 24 wide uh, from the pictures. As you'll see right after this clip, um, looks like it's in great shape. You know, the guy says he hasn't really used it much. You know, it belonged to his elderly parents who let it run low on oil. And uh, that's probably why it has low compression and may need a new motor. But then again, you know what I mean? They don't know what they're doing and they can't start it up, whatever. It may not be low compression at all. It may not start up just because the carburetor's dirty, you know? But uh, even if the motor is blown, I have an extra motor, you know? So, uh, sorry, not motor, engine. It's a gas engine. Motors are electric. Anyway, so uh, here's what it looks like. Hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry at Mowers and Blowers. Figure I'd come over to Harbor Freight Tools and check out their pneumatic tools, air impact wrenches. Robert Nighthawk told me to check out their Earthquake brand. A lot of tools. Pretty cheap too. $19.99. Cutting tools, grinders, air angle die grinders, air sanders. I might need this someday. Hoses. Alright, check this out. These air compressors. $194. This is huge. 26 gallon. That's 74. It's 29 gallon. 359. Central Pneumatic is a Harbor Freight brand. Pancake ones. 118. If you look at the CFMs, I don't think you can power uh, an impact wrench with that. You need at least four something. At least that's what I'm understanding from what I read. Oh, look at this one. 56 bucks? That's cheap. Holy cow, look at this beast, it's 
got a Predator engine on there. That looks like, that looks a lot bigger than 30 gallon, doesn't it? Look at the size of that, those motors. Well, a motor and an engine. 1200 bucks. Delivers 18 SCFMs at 90. 19 SCFMs at 40. So a lot of the followers told me that I was putting the wrong kind of oil in my air compressor. At least for long term, it, it, it would uh, decrease the longevity of it. I mean, who knows if my, my damn air compressor is going to last any longer than it has, you know. Uh, but either way, though, it's this is cheap. Look at that. A 32 fluid ounce compressor oil is only $6.99. You guys saw how much I put in there. Not much at all, you know. And this is uh, air tool oil. That's only four bucks. I probably wouldn't need these big containers. I'll probably get a couple of small containers of it. So uh, for my air tools, I need to oil them every time I use them. So I'm going to put an inline thing, you know. That's what they told me to do. And i uh, got to get some compressor oil. So I'm back. Uh, we just lifted it up and put it in there. I had it on videotape, but I didn't press record. So there it is. It's a green Craftsman, 5 horsepower Tecumseh Snow King, 24 wide. As you can see inside the auger area, it's uh, dirty and looks like it's been left outside for a bit. But uh, I don't see much rust. Looks like they're all in good condition. Skid shoes. If you look at the uh, top of the auger area, as you can tell, looks to be in good shape. You can also tell by the uh, engine area here. No rust. Tires look good. Hold air. Just a lot of dirt. It's been left outside, probably. Uh, so the guy said it had low compression, but it actually runs. Bone dry. Nothing in there. Let's check the Earl. Well, there is enough Earl black though. Not that black, but pretty black. Has electric start. You guys know that's like 40 bucks right there for the starter. I believe I have this exact engine that uh, my friend Jason gave me. So if this, ha this uh, engine doesn't run, I'll put that engine on there. No big deal. However, I have a feeling that it, you know, when the guy says it has low compression, maybe it just needs thicker oil on it and it'll uh, smooth out the um, cylinder and, uh, you know, fill the gaps for the rings and pistons and uh, give it a little better compression, you know. We'll see. Not bad at all. I mean, the whole thing is sound, you know what I'm saying? in it just a little bit you know just to try what do you guys think let's start I'm not too convinced
like very low compression. See if the uh, electric start works. I right, just plugged in the electric start. See if it works. Definitely seems like it's low compression. Engine's blown, pretty much. Transmission works well. You know what, man? That's not bad. Sums up with the governor. Throttle doesn't work up and down. Uh, it's revving really high. You know, I'm thinking maybe I should try to drain the oil and put some oil, thicker oil in there and then check out that governor area. That's what I'm thinking. You know, just to see if this thing will uh, start to run a little. Uh, it seems like it, it will run with a little better compression. You know how you can tell if it has a blown head gasket? It's been running for a while. If we take this dipstick cap off and look at the uh, reservoir, if there's smoke coming out, it's probably a blown head gasket. And there's no smoke. So probably I do not need a new head It's The head gasket is not blown. Well, these are all pretty good signs, actually, you know. I, I might want to try that uh, Lucas Oil Synthetic uh, 5W30. Uh, it's a thicker consistency. Or maybe I'll just put in some SAE30. That's pretty thick. And... Uh, Maybe run it a little bit uh, there. But uh, first I'm going to take off this heater box and check out the uh, throttle control governor. Take the knob off. Two small screws on the bottom. One 5 16 bolt for this one right here. Take the knob off. And you just let it hang. This is an original Tecumseh carburetor. When I say original, I mean not reproduction, not a Chinese copy. This hose is the breather hose. It's supposed to be pointed downwards because if you overfill your oil, um, after you build up a lot of oil pressure, it drains out that way down.
as you can see, what you what you do with this throttle does nothing to the governor. See? It's like it's missing a linkage, just doesn't do a thing. So I have to check that out. So what I just did was, you see this spring right here? This spring was all the way up here and it made it so tight, right, that it had no effect. When the engine's on, this governor automatically pushes this way. The spring lets it come back, right? So when the engine is running, it's like that. When you pull this throttle upwards, it pushes, see where that little screw is? That little screw pushes this lever, tightens that spring, and pull this pulls this governor to the right. It naturally wants to go to the left from the pressure of the engine, right? And the throttle will pull it this way. When this lever is to the right, throttles high. When it's to the left, throttles low. So I'm thinking the spring was on too tight at that top hole. And it didn't have enough energy or to pu push it back, maybe. I'm going to start it up and see if uh, the throttle works. As you see, that throttle spring does work. Uh, that's uh, the throttle now works. It goes high and low. However, the engine obviously has bad compression, so it's not going to run perfectly right now. Uh, I'm going to drain the oil and add some new oil in there. Give it an oil change and put thicker oil in there to see if it helps the compression. This is the reservoir for the oil change. I'm going to do a slight uh, decline so that it pours out. Otherwise, it's going to make a mess, as I always do.
I've got it just trickling now, so uh, that's good enough. Oil changes are not glamorous. Got it set up now, got a funnel. I'm gonna put some Lucas Oil Synthetic 5W30 in it. Good stuff. This is what came out of it. It's at the halfway mark. This is a 1.6 quart. So uh, give or take, it's about one quart is in here. So I dumped that entire quart of Lucas Oil 5W30 synthetic in there. I'm gonna check the levels now just to be sure. It's a discolored part right there on the dipstick. But if you can see that bead over there, it's a little above full, but it has to settle. So that's about right. I'm not going to put any more. Okay, I'm going to start her up now. So I'm going to check out the carburetor, because you can't properly tune a carburetor if it's dirty or messed up, you know. I've got the mention. Guy also gave me uh, three belts. This one looks old. This one looks used, but it is, looks new actually, but it looks new, uh, used. Maybe it's NOS, new old stock. These two look brand new, you know. Comes with the instruction manual as well as a couple of shear pins on the bottom here. Half inch wrench on a Tecumseh nut jet on the bottom. You know what? I might need to clamp that hose off because it's going to spill all over the place. Just get a clamp. Ought to do. Move this out of the way. Fuel will come down though. Lefty Lucy, righty tighty. I already feel fuel coming out. Man, I don't think this clamp is working. There we go. It's a little dirty. Sort of see through it. Not bad. Let's take a look at this bowl. Yuck! You guys see that? 
it is clear on the top, maybe one little layer, but on the bottom, it's like gelatin sludge. That'll cause your carburetor to not run right. Sludgy on the bottom. See, right there. Almost syrupy. Blech. Well, I'm going to get some carb cleaner. Blow out some of these holes. Got some torch tip cleaners. It's a little tiny one right there. That one is imperative that you get clean. See, it's funny because some other Tecumsehs, this fits. And other ones, it doesn't. You're gonna have to get one of those uh, bread, bread bag twisty ties. Shear it off. And use that for the little one. This one works. Carb cleaner. See if this shoots out the, the little one. Oh, it does, see? Woo! So you know that little one is clear. Let's try that again. Alright, this jet nut is clean. Check this out. I'm going to feel for the emulsion tube underneath. My fingers are so cold now from this jet. Take that back. I think this is a uh, copy. You know why? Float bowl is so shiny. When the float bowl is so shiny, it's not the original Tecumseh or Lawson. It is definitely a reproduction. This is no big deal because you know why? I carry these in stock. I have about five of these carburetors just so I can use them for this specific reason. So we know the uh, needle seats and all that stuff because we didn't have that clamp there to be pouring out, you know? So I'm going to put this bowl back on. As you guys can see, well maybe you can't, but Tecumseh is one of the only ones that make like a little bit of a ditch on the carburetor bowl. You have to make sure that the ditch is, part, uh, is uh, on the side of the float that dips down. Duh. Can't put that on without a gasket. This gasket is actually in pretty good shape considering the appearance of how dirty this thing is. I'm going to have a problem with this because it shrunk too small. I'm going to wrap this on here first. You know, ideally you want to take the carburetor off, but I figured I'd get away with a quick and dirty. And it's only because I've done this a 
million times, so I feel comfortable doing it. If this is your first time, I would recommend taking off the carburetor completely so you know exactly what you're doing. <laughs> As I struggle to get this on. See, I'm just going by touch, you know? I was joking around with my friend that I could actually do this blindfolded. It would take me a while, but I think I could do it. So, that feels right. <laughs> And that feels right. Put the newly cleaned nut back on. Tighten it with your uh, one half inch wrench. Lefty Lucy, righty tighty. Remember the nut is brass. Do not over tighten it. It will strip. Go to where you go. Oh, that's not quite tight yet. Oh, ooh, it's getting there. Well, it's it's getting pretty tight. Pretty tight. I can still go a little. I know I can. I know I can go just a little bit more. Do you really need to? There's a gasket on there. Anyway, here we go. So. Oh, that's it. Any more, you're going to bust it. That's how you know. Okay, let's uh, take off this fuel clamp. Round it off a little bit because it's been under clamp pressure. And watch for leaks. It fills up pretty quickly with the gas. See right here how it has a uh, zip tie that's holding this hose? That's not right. It should be a hose clamp. Or, yeah, a hose clamp or one of those uh, fuel line clamps. But you know what? It works. So I don't feel any leaks, which is great, you know. Um, just keep this choke open for now and give it a try. There's a fuel mixture jet in here that you could take off. So there's a little black. I'm going to put you there. I got you on the front now. I'm zooming in on the carburetor. I don't know if you guys see that. Point it out to you. Right there. There's a little black plastic thing. Get out. Be careful, that muffler's hot. I can feel it. Let me get some else. Screw it. Don't need that. It's a non-adjustable one. You just blow that out. It's clean.
again, guys, this is a quick and dirty, okay? You wanted to do this really correctly. Take the whole damn carburetor off. Take the whole thing apart. Put it in the ultrasonic cleaner. Oh, what the hell? It's right here. Make sure pop is the cap right on it. It is bent out of shape. It will not fit. Screw it. Rip. Runs pretty well. Pretty well, not well, but pretty well, you know, considering there's no compression. But I think that oil actually helped the compression, you know? Seems to start up fine. I'm letting it run for a bit, and you know what? It's really not bad. It's got low idle. Honestly, man, that's really not bad. When I engage the uh, auger, it blows strong, no hesitation. Actually, it idles right now. It's surprising. That carb clean definitely did something. 
and uh, that oil is fine. It's not smoking or or nothing. I think I think I'm just gonna keep it this way. It's fine. Since it didn't record before about me putting this uh, taking this uh, cover off, I'll at least show you me putting it back on, so you at least know how to reverse engineer it if you need to. You can feel the knob right here come out of the hole. Remember this muffler is super hot. It's designed this way so that the air box, heater box, gets the heat from the um, uh, heat from the um, muffler, keeps the carburetor warm in super cold temperatures. Teeny tiny screw. If this doesn't, if this didn't run well or start, I would have replaced the carburetor with one of those uh, newer ones, or took that carburetor off and cleaned it better. But everything works right now. Actually, runs pretty well. I think I'm just going to keep it this way. Clean it up uh, in the spring. We're not looking at any snow anytime soon. But uh, this engine seems to run pretty well with the new oil change with the uh, synthetic 5W30 motor oil with the quick and dirty car clean. I'm gonna pump up the tires a little bit and then park it in the backyard until it's a nice day so I can try my uh, many, my three power washers clean up my entire hoard. Anyway, so I bought this for 50 bucks. I'll clean this baby up and sell it in the uh, next winter for 350. While I was out here, I figured I had the wrong motor oil in there. So I got some Central Pneumatic 32 fluid ounce air compressor oil. I mean, between you and I, I think oil's oil, to be honest with you. It lubricates, right? Yeah, I understand. It has to be the right weight and all that stuff. But this was uh, the 5W30 synthetic that I took out of there. Look how black it is already. It was crystal clear before. Now it's like dark, you know? Well, at least I cleaned out that engine, right? Ah! Earl. Remember, I didn't have to put too much in here.
check that window. That's actually quite a lot. Look at that. Right in the middle. It's going to settle a little bit, though. Right on the balls. Might as well pump up the tires. Since, of course, I've got uh, quite a lot of uh, gas in there, I, it's not quite full completely, but that's uh, not quite a gallon. So uh, I'm going to put some stable 360 protection in here. This is ethanol treatment and stabilizer. So this entire bottle treats five gallons. So because this is not even a gallon that I put in there, I don't know when I'm going to use this again. So just to be safe, that's, that's about it. Maybe That's it. That's all you need. Uh, two or three capfuls, you know what I mean? So hopefully that, uh, if this stays uh, in my yard for the remainder of the uh, winter and through the summer, my carburetor won't get all jacked up, you know? I'm plugging all the sponsors today, huh? Thanks, Stable. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey guys, support my channel. Buy a sticker. Got the bumper sticker too. Thanks for watching, guys. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Follow my Instagram at Mowers Blowers. Check it out.